Next up on the Mutual Audio Network, fiction from our future. The following audio drama is rated R and is recommended restricted for anyone under the age of 17. following audio presentation may contain mature language, situations, and violence. Listener discretion is advised. Previously on Edict Zero FIS. How can I remember? I have never seen one of them outside of the box with their eyes open. They are slowly looking around for God's sake. Seriously, we're talking major circular neuronal activity in the brain. What the hell is in that man's head? What did you both tell Garrett? Hmm? The truth. They told me why I can remember things that I shouldn't be able to. The mystery implant. (laughs) The plot thickens. Oh, I see. I see. Not so long ago, it was tell him nothing. It's too dangerous, said Jimmy Prime. Interesting. This sounds suspiciously like a recruitment speech. He'll remember everything, though, won't he? If he woke up? Everything. Everything. He wouldn't just remember the life cycles in Edict Zero, he would remember the times that he was in the guff, every beat. The guff. As in the Chamber of Guff? The Treasury of Souls? The place where clients used to wait for an entity to live. It became corrupted during an update many years ago. Now it just spells ghosts when it becomes overloaded. Ghosts. Who evidently have been affected by the last of It must have been a strange journey for you, all this. Your life. When did it start? When did it really start? My wager? The death of your sister. Leave her out of this. Sweet, innocent Isabel. She was sitting right next to you when it happened. It must truly be... A horrible memory. I'm not your sister. You look at me and you see her. What? But I'm not her. I hear her. I hear all of them. All the time I hear them. It happened because conspiracists were fleeing police. A reckless high-speed chase. It was a cruiser that collided with your mother's car, after all. That girl has quite a haunting face. Haunted eyes. Windows to the soul, they say. Yeah, they remind me of yours, Jules. To a hostage situation. One involving a captor. Then who, may I ask, is Sondra? How do you know about that? Did you save her? (laughs) Did you save Sondra from the monster? Did you say that? Where are the victims? E1CLS? Yes, and quarantined. Two patrons and the owner, Mr. Tony Pife, who the unidentified woman got into an argument with. He swore that she did it just by staring at them. Some kind of telekinesis. Her name is Elana Hobbs. No one else using those bands heard anything? A male voice? No, he, he, me. Uh, thought I knew her name from somewhere. She was the girlfriend of Bruce Stiegel, the infamous West Island spree killer. The world will know we were here. Forever. Bruce Stiegel and Elena Hobbs. Forever. Elena Hobbs and Bruce Stiegel. Forever. Stick them right now. Stick them right now. You know how it turns me on. Elevated in position, waiting at a go for entry. Going down together. If I flag my arm, go and go fast. You think they're going to suicide? It's you and me, baby. Forever. Across the sky. Oh my god! Oh, thank god! I thought he was going to kill me too! He was crazy! 
never care about me the way you did. Why, since you, honey, it's been nothing but fools. They all think I'm an object they can own someday. <laughs> or they have some stupid idea that they love me. They're children. They don't know what love is. They don't see me like you do. Just don't do to Danny what you did to Tony, okay? He touched you in anger. He touched my lady. Nobody does that, if I ever say. I had it under control. I always have it under control. Outside Edict Zero. World Stem Network EDZ6. Pearl Man Sanctuary 9. Spoon. Listen. No. I can't believe that you, you are on board with this. How could you possibly trust him? He's Edict 3. Not anymore, he's not. He's got nothing to return to out there. He's Black Flag. He and the understudy He'll both. Bag him. And he won't end up in some cozy sandbox. No, nope. foot down. <laughs> there probably won't be any coffee. Right here, foot down. You... You don't have a foot to put down on this, Spoon. You don't get a vote. No. Especially when you're clearly biased. At what point did someone die and make you the Queen Bee? I assembled this group. Or have you forgotten? No offense to Agent Garrett, but I side no, with Spoon on this. No, no, I'm not hearing this, absolutely not. We have a major global event and you both lose your minds. Yes, it's all very scary, booga booga. This is not the time for brain damage. No, not the time. I'm not after thinking it's going to get any better. Not the time. It's one thing after another night. Sanity check, all this round. It's becoming critical now. It's already there. What bloody relevance does he have to that? We might have something here. An opportunity outside of the box. Even if his meaty counterpart would be of any use, which he won't, we still have nothing. Unless you have some magic to repair hull fractures and restore the environmental control system, nothing. It's a start, Spoon. Oh, he's got the Fed in his veins and acts on principle. You can't control him. They couldn't even control him. He'll go renegade. He's not a team player. And you are... Well, I seem to remember having the same debate about you, Spoon. Don't draw parallels. The same. There's no comparison. But if you insist, congratulations. You're inviting double the chaos. That would be a hungus, ungainly responsibility. He's environmentally reactive. He's driven by the context of his environment. Um, you guys do know that Agent Garrett is standing right there, right? Yes, I am. And I'm taking notes. Give trust. Get trust, like it was with you. Well, that's quite the open switch right now. Fine. I'll not be held responsible for whatever results Maybe from this. Maybe we should all slow down and no, think no. about this a little bit. No, no. It's no, no. Too late. That's it. It's settled. Let's go, so I can be proven right. It's a non-optimal solution, but we have no choice. Come on, then. It won't take long. Behold. Salvation. Salvation? Onward, I say, and we shall fight the good fight. Ah, no, no, you. No, no definitely you. not him. I'm a good citizen. I like the captain, but I agree. I'm a good citizen. It's unanimous. The odds of you all, how did you put it, controlling him are pretty much non-existent. You can be a good citizen right here, Captain. He must stay here. He's priceless. Far too precious. A one of a kind. Yes, yes. Come now, everyone, quickly. Yes. Priceless. Priceless. <laughs> wait, wait. No, no. I wish to go. I'm a good citizen. I'll be a good citizen. You're wasting a golden opportunity for you, yeah, time. No, 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 no. You can't keep me in here. I'll go mad. I'll go mad. Oh, I think you're way past that. No, 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 no. I'm a good citizen. Wait, wait, what? What, what? what? What did you say? Me time. Yes, all alone. Just you. No Agent Garrett. Look, he's gone. Yes. Yes, yes! 
Alone, at last. Good God, you're right. You're right. <laughs> Prime, let's go. Now. Yes, yes. Alone, at last. Oh, the silence. The sweet, savory silence. Greetings, play. <laughs> play. What? what? A new game. No, no. Not you. No, no, stop that. You are listening to Eat It Zero, FIS, the science fiction audio drama series starring Dane Leonardson, Catherine Rinella, James Keller, Julie Hoverson, Phil Rossi, Tanya Milojevic, Russell Gold, Fiona Thrail, Jennifer Dixon, Robert Cudmore, Chris Barnes, David Collins Rivera, Caitlin Sneddon, Owen McEwen, Joe Stofko, Steve Schneider, and creator Jack Kincaid. Dunbar, North Island, Falkland Technical Service Center, Xenas Corporation subsidiary, Site NC11, Secret Floor, Shadow Group Base of Operations. The embassy is taxed. The assets of all the edicts is spread thin. To deal with the ghost problem? Hmm. It's not just the ghosts. There's hundreds of other corruption byproducts from the global event. Why are you looking at me like that? I'm not looking at you. Not now, but you were. Hmm? See the living crocodile. Ah, of course. You must have seen the unusual human that's connected to me. It's okay. You can stare at me if you want. I wasn't staring. It doesn't bother me, I don't mind. Your eyes are intriguing, really. Enchanting. Uh, would someone care to show me, too? The human, my meat. I'll put it on screen. Oh, no. I don't want to see that again. If you're going to... Wait. What did you just say about my eyes? I said they were intriguing. Pretty amazing. Oh. You have nice eyes, too. I mean, you, not your... N not the... On screen. Okay, I... Both good. of you, get a room already. I wasn't flirting. I was verbalizing a thought. Wow. That's interesting. I wasn't flirting, either. Wait. Why weren't you flirting? He seems to be looking around. I can't stay here. He's I'm the not. only one like this? Yep. The only one. Not even the admins. It's something with that implant. Why him? Hmm. It's impossible for the humans to regain control because of the environmental control system. If any woke, they couldn't leave the stasis chambers without a suit. The humans regaining control has no happy ending. If that happened and they stabilized Edict Zero, the celebration would be short-lived. They will have no respect for or feel any responsibility toward any of us. This world will be their virtual playground. They would treat us like toys in a sandbox or entities in a computer game that they could turn on and off at their whim. They'd bottle or switch off the whole lot of us if we served no logical purpose to them. Well, that's exactly what they think about us. What do you mean? Hasn't mankind always presumed that machines, if given enough intelligence and power, would destroy them? They've thought the same about what advanced aliens would do if they encountered humans. Have you ever asked yourself why? Why? It's through the filter of their experience. They're projecting their own traits, their own nature. It's what humans do. Destroy. Bang, you agree with me. It's settled. Enough for the argument. I agree that, like the meat, you're projecting. And why wouldn't you? It's part of the human design that we're meant to emulate. But what you're really saying is that mm, you're afraid that they will be just like you. Oh, wow. What are you talking about? Oh, wow. You're a megalomaniac. Oh, this is going well already. There's one small problem with your theory, Grasshopper. Megalomania is predicated on a delusion, not real, tangible capability. Spoon. Corp it down a little. I could demonstrate some of that capability for you right now. Of course you could and would. You don't have respect for other entities. This world is your playground. You can pull out a gadget and do whatever you want to Tell anyone. me I'm wrong about the meat. 
tell me that there isn't a Pandora's box of oppression waiting for all of the us. The funny thing about oppressed groups is that their usual response is to mimic the worst behavior of their oppressors. That's often the best that they can think to do. You're off to a great head start. I thought you might want to know. I'm ahead of the curve, not a shocker. Was there some point you were trying to make? Based on your track record, I think you're the last person who should be giving lessons on morality. Morality? Nah, it's about being aware. The meat would make ghosts out of us all. To them, we never existed in the first place, and that's the accursed truth to be aware of. He'll come around. To what is the question? Where's my old unit? In North Island? The Embassy? They're in West Island. It appears they're working on a case. It has to do with one of the corrupted ghosts. All four of them? There's five of them now. Look on screen. Interesting. Agent Resnick finally accepted a promotion as unit chief. That may not play out well. Is that a bad thing? Well, that depends on what you consider bad. She had reasons for resisting the promotion. She didn't want to lead. Why is that? Because... she knows herself. Foley and West Island. 1155 Winston Road. Residence of Hugh Lester. Time, 5.27 p.m. You Freddy's got some kind of warrant to be asking me these questions? F.I.S.? Edict numero three, huh? Can we come in or can you step outside? No. I like to see a screen door right between We're us. We're asking you to cooperate in a federal investigation. You previously shared a residence with our suspect, who we know to be in the area. She may attempt contact if she hasn't already. <laughs> I didn't hear an answer to my question. No one requires a warrant to ask questions, Mr. Lester. Edict 3 requires warrants for other things. Like searching your property if there is reasonable suspicion that you might be aiding and abetting a fugitive from justice. I haven't seen that witch. Which is a healthy thing for the both of us, too. Look, I know nothing. You are being combative. It is enough to make us wonder. Is it because you're lying to us? Or are you nervous because you know that even a cursory search of your property would turn up illegal firearms? You have been convicted twice before. I don't got no guns. That'd be illegal, wouldn't it? The high minded don't want us to have any protections. Even as pandemonium's playing out, people are going off their nuts because you tops won't even answer the simplest questions that we have. Like what in the hell is going on with this planet? How about that? If you are withholding any information... <laughs> you think I live alone out here in a piece of the country with no neighbors in sight because I want to deal with folks like you knows in my business, huh? Asking questions you got no right to? Violating my damn civil rights? Dunking to my doorstep with your... Agent Stowe, keep watch on the road, please. You've certainly embraced our technologies. Do you suspect something? If he has weapons, we have leverage to get him to tell us the truth. We are no longer bound by Edict 3 protocol. Why did you use the CDD? Practice. Resnick? It's Jules. Briggs and I haven't turned up any leads from anyone that we've questioned so far. Half of them would like to see her hung. All of them claimed that they've had no recent contact with her. None were happy to see us. Mm -hmm. We are having the same experience. It's difficult to judge who might be deceiving us about Elena. These people have their own things to hide. Some obviously thought that we had come for them. Welcome to West Island North. Home sweet home. She must have had help to have her prisoner implant removed. And she needs more, or she wouldn't have emptied the cash register at the bar in Olean. If she hasn't found that help already, she's seeking it. Yes, and must be taking precautions to hide her face from the most aggressive public surveillance system in the Five Islands. Do we know anything more about the apparent telekinesis, or whether this is part of a larger corruption event? We're waiting to be advised by the Embassy. What we do know is that the other events involved similar corruptions. Objects that moved by themselves and voices, which witnesses claimed were their loved ones who passed away. 
I'm scared to ask. Do we know this to be possible? Is it zero? Relatively speaking? The ghosts, yes. It's a problem with the client system. Ghosts affecting world physics. That <laughs> should not be possible. Agent Zern is set to remote question one of the prison transport guards to see if he can remember anything else about her escape. East Vancouver. FIS Field Office. Communication Lab G4. Followed up questioning with Lawrence Berkman. Time, 5.47 p.m. When the crazy thing with the sky started, I grabbed the radio to ask dispatch if they knew what was going on, and it shocked me. What did they tell you? No, I mean the radio shot. The electric shot. There was a lot of juice going through it. Through the whole van. You could hear it. You could feel it. What happened next? It all happened so fast. There was so much going on at once. Frank died. A heart attack, I guess. We slammed into a truck. One second I'm in the van. The next I'm flying through the air with everyone else. That was after the prisoner was suddenly out of her handcuffs and chains. Just poof. I can't explain that. I can't explain any of it. What can you tell me about the voice you heard over the radio? He seemed to be shouting at Pat at first, the officer in the back. He said something like, You can hear me? Like this was a surprise or something. I distinctly remember that voice saying, It's me, baby. It's me. He was talking to the prisoner. He knew her. He definitely knew her. That's helpful. Thank you. We'll uh, contact you if we have any more questions. Thanks for your time. Sure thing. Spooky. Is everything I'm, all right? Yeah, I, I, I'm fine. Everything's fine. I'm coming to the lab. Thanks. <clears throat> uh, Zern. Hey, it's Briggs. We've got a lead. It's caused another event. This time at a service station. We're headed there now. Where? East of Crescent City. South of Nairi. Arbuckle. West Island. Route 36. Back me mobile charging station and convenience store. Time, 6.44 p.m. All traffic is being diverted from the outer perimeter until the east side cleanup is complete. Deputies at the control point to the west side have reported members of the press camping with telephoto cameras. One person with a press badge has been detained for trying to sneak in. His credentials were forged. We know him to be a member of a conspiracist watchdog group. They're tireless. I can't blame them, to be honest. Would someone bring me up to speed? Ilana stopped here and paid for a full charge at the counter with cash. The cashier, Miss Jan McClelland, thought she was acting suspicious. Aside from the oversized dark sunglasses on an overcast day, she acted hypervigilant about the position of the cameras while she charged the car. Ms. McClelland noticed this, but wasn't going to call it in. Our mystery ghost entity must have thought she was going to, though, when she went to call her friend. She- Ghost entity? We've confirmed that's what it is. The cashier was gripped by an unseen force that carried her through the air into the back room. Carried? She doesn't remember most of it because she fainted. We have the whole thing on video. And while this was happening, Alana was driving away. This is a separate, sentient entity working with her. It is a source of the corruptions. She wasn't thrown and thrashed like the no. others? No. I think it's a clue. I don't know what that means yet, but I do have a theory. 
We talked about looking for the current or the next Ray Malone to predict her next movements. If we want to give a name to this ghost, however, we need to look at the old ones. An ex-boyfriend. One that's deceased. That should narrow down the list. The prison guard that I talked to said the male voice from the radio was definitely someone she knew well. Did any of you see the name of the FIS agent who was assigned to the Bruce Stiegel murder spree case? No. Is there relevance to this case? Relevance to us? It was Alan Dockstader. No kidding. A.D. Dockstader? Dockstader? Before he was A.D. Dockstader. We should talk to him. Where did Elena Hobbs get a car? What about that? The cameras must have captured it. They did. We identified it as a dark brown 2406 or 2407 model Morpheus Sport. Tinted windows, stolen South Island plates. We have bulletins out to all state and local E4. We need to be well positioned. Most of her contacts are in the Phoenix area, but she's not heading south. Too risky. From here, she's either going east or north. Crescent City or Nary. 50-50. Should we split up? Agent Kircher, aren't you from Nairi? Yes, I am. Ilana Hobbs is no genius mastermind, but she's no fool either. You won't find a port more heavily monitored. 90% of the traffic is military. I agree. She's trying to get to North Island. By water is the only way that will happen. If she wants to make it across the Quatsino Sound, Crescent City is the better bet. We need to find out who she knows that has the means. Crescent City, West Island, West Side. Inbound Route 101. Time, 9.30 p.m. So, you still love me? After all these years. We said forever. I meant forever. Forever shouldn't be some word that people say in the moment that's gone with the moment. That's not what forever is about. You still love me even though I'm old and not as pretty. I don't know what you're talking about. Your soul is all I see, goddess. It's all I ever saw. You see it so well, don't you? You're the only one who sees. Can we trust this Craig guy not to turn on us? Ah, He won't. He eats out of my hand as long as I give him a little something. Just enough to keep him hanging on. I don't like that. We need him. But it doesn't mean anything to me. Remember that, Brucey. It means nothing. Have trouble. Look in the rear view. We're fine as long as he <sighs> doesn't do that. I'll take care of it. Crescent City Police Cruiser. And the make model in place matches the APB on the 1098. Code C double negative. I'm in pursuit heading eastbound on 101. I have no visual of the occupants because of the tenant windows. We have your position. Backup is on the way. Over. We're climbing to dangerous speeds here. We need to get some eyes on the sky just in case this... Ah, ah, Redwood Highway, northbound. How far away are you from the pursuit? Farther than we'd like to be, but we're closing the distance pretty quick. We're riding the wake of the wisps that answered the call out for all available E4, and we're flying. Under normal circumstances, I would feel confident that this is going to end on the road. With this, who knows? What is normal, anyway? Normal is fine, circa three months ago. We don't want this to end on the road. We'll have another dramatic event on a major highway with too many witnesses. Casper the unfriendly ghost has already taken out three patrol cars. Taken them out? How? We were speculating, but he somehow disrupted the vehicle systems. Some kind of surge through the electronics. 
He's not just playing with some kind of psychokinesis jewels. Somehow, he's electrical. We saw that with the interloper in St. Percy, except it wasn't deliberate. What did I just hear from the radio about no visual? The police have no direct one right now. They're tracking through public camps on Highway 101. There's a police aerial unit trying to get a beat on the car. If this goes down on the road, we'll deal with it, but let's not assume it will. We need to find out where she plans to go to next. We think that we have someone who knows. He is the owner of the car. We traced it by cross-referencing the specs of the car with her list of connections. We are in Ethel now, dealing with the sleeves. Will he talk? He will soon. Ethel, West Island, 182 Flint Road. Residence of Daniel Trigney. If you cooperate, we will recommend to the court that you receive lighter sentences for your crimes, two of which are federal and will stick. If you don't cooperate, the sentence would be substantial if you made it that far. You won't. And, uh, why, oh, and why wouldn't I? <laughs> what are you going to do? <laughs> We're creative women. Extremely. Creative. All right, uh... <laughs> Living out the rest of your life in prison would be difficult enough. Now imagine that with a severe handicap. Uh... Prison is no place for the vulnerable. Uh, uh, that goes doubly for you and your adorable baby oh, face. Oh, oh, you, you girls. You girls. You girls. You girls are intense, you know that? <laughs> Hey, uh, hey, are uh, uh, you the good cop? We didn't bring the good cop. The good cop gets in the way. We don't want to be interrupted. Oh, oh would it be, uh, would it be wrong for me to say that I'm kind of turned on right now? You won't be for long. I want to shoot him first. <laughs> that wouldn't be fair. Uh, I know my rights. After all. It's you who tortured the last one. Not nearly enough. You're hogging all the fun. Excuse me. I am the agent in charge. I get to make the decision. I want to shoot him. I know my rights. And I have chosen a spot. Hey now. Hey now. <laughs> you shouldn't use that weapon. I know my it needs to be adjusted. Remember, you set the last one on fire. The stink was awful. Uh, you, you, you're trying to freak me out, but I know my rights, all right? I wonder if he has marshmallows in the cupboard. I love roasted marshmallows. What do you want to ask me? Do you have... graham crackers and chocolate? Ooh, s'mores. Uh. That's a wonderful idea. I haven't had s'mores in ages. That would hit the spot right now. I'm aiming at the spot right now. No, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. What do you want to ask me about Elena? How disappointing. I think he's going to cooperate. He won't. Ask him something we already know and he'll lie. Then can I shoot him? We can't stop you. You're the agent in charge. And that's right. I am. I think he's going to tell us the truth. He won't. Watch. Okay, Mr. Trigney. Elena Hobbs was headed for Crescent City to meet with someone. What's his name? He's hesitating and his eyes looking up to the right. He's already concocting something. Not necessarily. You do know that branch of neurolinguistics is controversial. Nah, he's going to lie. You said the same when we asked you know who if he planned to smuggle Ilana across the Sound to North Island. What did he do? He confessed at once. Okay, Craig Satzler. Okay. Craig Satzler. Okay. Okay. He's an old mutual friend. I don't know anything else. I let her borrow the car. That's it. She's crazy. She is crazy. She, she wasn't going to think no for an answer. You, you don't tell her no. <laughs> that bitch, that bitch uh, is capable of anything, all right? Anything. I doubt it went quite like that. 
How many pouts of her lips and bats of her eyelashes did it take? Oh, it, it, it wasn't like that. It, Very good, Mr. Trigney. We have no more questions at this time. Uh, you... Don't? Thank you for your time and cooperation. It will reflect well on you with the judge. Crescent City, West Island. That's a tunnel system, isn't it? It's two road tunnels that intersect, connecting different districts. Not counting the railroad tunnel and ventilation tunnels. Railroad tunnel. There's subway access. Yes, and to a city parking garage. This is E3SA Briggs. You better use any surveillance lines you've got in there. She could ditch the car and take it to foot or train. Over. 10 4 to that, Mr. Big Agent. Gee whiz, none of us knuckleheads would have sunk it. Over. <laughs> <laughs> I saw it on the floor. <laughs> I got the gratitude. I am a helper here to serve. Over. I hope you followed the right trooper. We did until now. Trust me. We don't have a flasher. I said to trust me. I know this city. I get a deep cover here once. We'll reach the ocean view side of 101 in two minutes and be right behind her. That's five cars taken out now. What's your plan? What's your plan? Ask me again in two minutes. <laughs> I was afraid you would say something like that. Festival of Lights. No kidding. Complete with the media helicopter. This isn't gonna end well. An ICE will be impossible. Either way, what's gonna happen is gonna happen. Who are you? FIS, we're here to assist. You can scan our creds. I believe you. Let's go. Elena May Hobbs, FIS, step out of the vehicle. What the? There's no way she could have. What? Damn it. <laughs> Are you sure you want to climb in a car? I've got to check. Looking for someone? Tell his slave master that Bruce Stiegel sends his regards. She's not there, is she? No, she isn't. It's clear. She's not in there, then who the hell was driving? Somebody must have been remote driving. If Zenus can do it, then Mr. somebody else can. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Tunnel. That's where she got out. Harbor District. Time, 11.24 p.m. People make mistakes. I was lost and confused, Craigie. I didn't think you loved me. I didn't know how anyone could. Now I know you do. It took being with douchebags who didn't care about me at all to see it. Oh, sorry. I made a mistake. You abandoned me in the middle of nowhere with no money, 
No car, no way to escape, no friends because I gave them all up to defend us, and the police after me. I spent seven months in a South Island jail. A cage inside a cage. I was all alone. Do you know what that did to me? All those months. Do you have any idea? You confessed to everything. You could have implicated me. Why didn't you? Because I loved you, stupid. I swore I would always protect you. I swore. I... I I couldn't do that to you. Loved? You don't anymore? Craigie, look into my eyes. Please, look. No. Craigie, please. No. Why? Because I want to too much. <sighs> Look, things are different. It's a different world, Elena. Don't you see what's happening around you? The big change, the new times. They're happening. <laughs> of course they are. Sooner or later, everyone had to wake up to see that they were slaves to a system that gives power to just a few. They always had freedom, but they were too weak to seize it. Fools. Cowards. I always knew it, and so did you. That's part of why I love you. Oh, it's bigger than that. So much bigger. There's a war coming. I was born to be a part of it. I found something. I found me. What about us? I... You know I love you. I heard that you got your boat back. Hmm, I remember some great times on that boat. Over every inch of it. I... Uh, the ship leaves port at 1230, the big cargo ship. I can get you on it. You'll be with others who need a safe passage to North Island. There's people I know there who can help you. So it's true. You really don't love me anymore? I love you. You and only you. There's been no one else but this. This is important to me. It's important to everything. Okay. Harbor District, Crescent City, Regional Port Authority Building, Observation Tower, Overlooking the Southern Docks and Container Terminal, Time, 11.40 p.m. We thank you for the cooperation. This is Special Agent Zern, Briggs, Stowe, Kircher, and I'm UC Cora Resnick. I am Agent Smith, and this is my associate, Agent Johnson, Department of Intelligence, Counterterrorism. We already have DOS support in position. We were expecting a couple things tonight. You guys showing up wasn't one of them. Your target is an FRC group? That's correct. This was a joint op with the E3COD until our last packet of intel from the embassy. A threat assessment warned of a probable ECE if we chose to move on this. Earlier this evening, E3SAs were dismissed from the site near the first E3 unit I've encountered that had embassy level clearance. What conspiracist group are we talking about? It's a newly formed group made of the remains of others that have dissipated or splintered. Your guy, Craig Statchler, is among them. The leader, Voss, is a known bishop soldier. And we've intercepted communications that tell us that the allegiance hasn't changed. It's the assistant director, excuse me. We'll fill you in after, Jules. Why didn't he call me? This group has strategically placed themselves in jobs on this port as dock workers, truck drivers, and aboard the ships. Tonight, all eyes are on that ship, right there. The THS November. Why that ship? We believe several of the containers have been loaded with contraband. We thought drugs at first. Some groups have been dirtying their hands in the North Island drug trade to fund their activities. With the McCrins? Deal with the devil. 
It may be something else entirely, now that we know about the bishop being involved. Bishop soldiers have been proliferating a rising amount of corruption causing tech. That's the fear. Correct. Unrefined trial and error mad scientist stuff. We also believe that they're using the ship to smuggle out fugitives wanted for sabotage. If your escapee is trying to flee the island through a connection with Craig Stachler, it will be on the THS November. It leaves port in 50 minutes, then we move. After it leaves port. There will be fewer possible complications if the ship is offshore. It's a better scenario for containment. What she said. That's about the only thing that we, the Embassy, and the BEO agrees on. An event of some kind is likely. It's almost assured with Elena Hobbs on board. She has a disembodied entity protecting her that's violent and can affect world physics. What kind of entity? A client ghost that corrupted during the last amendment. Uh, now ghosts. Great. Oh. It's not just any ghost. It's the infamous spree killer, Bruce Stiegel. He'll kill men indiscriminately. If I were you, I'd only have female ops step foot on that shit. Why doesn't he kill women? We think women represent a mother that denied him love, a love that he still desires. Men are extensions of an abusive father who received the love that he did not. That sounds about right. Jesus, you behavioral guys are spooky as hell. Uh, ghost. Something new every day. It's hard to keep up with. Just keep moving, Agent Smith. Yeah, that's all any of us can do. Elena Hobbs can appear emotional like the rest of us, but it's just as disingenuous as her tears, which come from a place of infantile frustration. She's fundamentally a sociopath, one who preys on men with specific vulnerabilities. She can smell emotional post-trauma and borderline personalities from miles away, knowing instinctually which subtypes will be the most susceptible to her manipulations. I certainly wouldn't credit her for having any expert knowledge of psychological disorders. Well, neither would I. That's why I said instinctually, encoded by conditioning through the course of her life experience if you want the behaviorist answer. Survival. She is otherwise inept or she wouldn't be limited to preying on the weak. I have forwarded to you all of my notes on this case. Reconnecting with her previous lovers wouldn't take any work if they're in between relationships. It would be like grabbing an old book and picking up the story where she left it off. Yes, the bonds that these men form will be enduring, wired into their own survival instinct to keep, not unlike a hard drug with powerful memories of its high. It only takes one hit to relapse and fall back under its influence. What about Bruce Stiegel? He is a ghost, or quasi-ghost. I haven't exactly been trained in that area of psychology. Neither have I, Agent Kircher. I would recommend that you set that to the side for right now. How can I? Knowing that there's a whole other dimension to his experience and environmental factors that I know next to nothing about, I feel in the dark on this. Until there's an unexpected deviation from what you know, I recommend that you analyze him no differently than the other men. I judge by her history, a consistent victimology, and she might have as many as two dozen waiting in the wings at any given time. Like Craig Satchler. Expect the same dynamic. These men are so desperate to keep or rekindle the bond that they will suspend their own interests. They'll do just about anything for it. Yes all the while blind to the one-sided nature of it. Yes, they confuse her for what they feel, they project their hopes and even their own good intentions onto her. Their constant adoration offers her narcissistic supply while their own self-esteem erodes. Because they own her bad traits that she projects onto them, if they haven't already done the work for her, they will own it all, becoming unworthy of the paragon they perceive her to be, which strengthens her position. You make them sound inculpable. The idealization alternates with devaluing among borderlines. We have a known fact, but that's contextual. Under these conditions, the devaluing is more awareness than perception. To confront the negative things as an extension of her threatens the desperately needed bond, causing a conflict rooted in their dependence and plain old-fashioned pride. It subverts back to idealization, each time from a place of greater disadvantage and deeper investment. 
Are you personalizing a crazy ex-girlfriend, sir? Not that I'm aware. If I'm guilty of personalizing anything, it's this case. All my efforts to deliver justice were in vain. And she walked. She got away with it. Despite my best efforts. I apologize. Apologies aren't necessary. Also understand that I'm not playing gender favorites, Agent Kircher. Man to woman, woman to man, homosexual, heterosexual, it works the same. I'm keeping this in context with Elena Hobbs and the men that she uses. The more ambiguous and undeveloped their own sense of self, the less they are able to distinguish where they end and where she begins. His bond with her supplies the substance, and I want to be sure that you're keeping that in mind with Bruce Stiegel. I did what I could to reach him. I didn't succeed. I suppose I find some distaste in using the word victimology when a multiple murderer like Bruce Stiegel is on the victim list. Yeah, understandable. We are all culpable for our actions. There's only so much philosophy that justice can entertain before it becomes ineffective. But from a scientific perspective, we cannot be blind to the contributing factors. Bruce Stiegel was a troubled man, but he was not a killer until he met Elena Hobbs. Container Terminal 5, Warehouse and Operations Office. I promised her that I would get her on that ship. You were in no position to make that promise. I'm concerned about you, Craig. This would not be the first time you lost your way from the larger purpose. I accept responsibility for her. Why? Her purpose is not our purpose. The Edicts are scouring West Island for her. If you had any clarity, you would understand the, the liability we're already taking on by her even being here. Their search for her could lead them to us and jeopardize everything. What you've done is foolish. What was I supposed to do? Abandon her? I love this woman. Enough to risk everything? Even your place among us that you work so hard to find? Her liability extends to you by association, Craig. Men have been excommunicated for much less than this. You must choose your cause with resolve and consideration. I have chosen my cause, but she's worth the risk to me. To you, yes. To me, no. Not to me, not to anyone else. Tell me and be honest with yourself when you answer. For you, what would this woman risk? How much would she risk? Is it in any way comparable? Do you now see? Please. idea what he's done. He won't know until it's too late. And it's already too late. He's a dead man. A dead fool. Boss, I think something's wrong. It went smoothly, my friend. I'll, I'll see you in North Island. Our communications went down outside. Oh, I'm Effective, but disturbing. Before long, this will be routine and you won't think much of it. That's what I'm afraid of. If this had been handled the old-fashioned way, there would have been quite a firefight in here from the look of things. Weigh that and it's hard to see where to draw the line. Why did you want to stay and work this angle with me instead of Briggs? Why didn't you go with Cora and Agent Stowe? I, uh, avoid boats if given the choice. It reminds me too much of Operation Troy. It takes me back in a way that I could do without. Considering how unhappy I am with you, I knew there had to be some reason. <sighs> None of these men are Craig Satchler. He didn't board the THS November, so where is he? I'll check to see if one of the other teams has him. 
if Satchler isn't here, and he isn't on that ship, then... This is Special Agent... <laughs> Hi there. You didn't finish your sentence there. Why don't you finish it for me? Just for me. I want an exclusive. Inquiring minds want to know. Don't come in here! No one comes in here! No one! Everything is okay! What's happening? What's happening? Don't come in here unless you want to be killed! Bruce? Bruce Steagle? Are you still here? I sure am, miss. Why aren't you with Elena? Why are you here? Just looking for hitches in our new plan like you. You don't seem too freaked out over me. That's a bit of a head-scratcher. It's made me awful curious. I have experienced worse than you. A woman of experience, you say? I like that. I have respect for that. You also looking a little too inspired there. I damn near saw the light bulb turn on over that pretty head. I thought you could use a little more time to think that through. Are you a man who thinks things through? I like to think so, miss. Your last stand with the police at Apache Junction. Did you think that through? I sure did, with my lady. That was something, wasn't it? Lots of people know my name now. I hang around to listen to things people say now and then. I made my mark. How many can never say the same? Did it happen as planned? Elena was supposed to die too, wasn't she? You were supposed to die together. Huh. How odd. She got scared, that's all. Have you ever known Elena to be scared of anything? Why are you asking me all these questions? You're starting to sound like that Mr. Allen character. He was a fetty too, so I guess there's no mystery to that. Was the plan for her to blame you for everything? She got scared. She's a lady. She didn't have the belly for it. I understood. Did she tell you that? No. I know my lady. I know that's how it went. So you didn't even ask? You just gave her the benefit of the doubt? Bruce... Well... Well, well, well. If I was still living and breathing, I think you were trying to angle into my action. As I'm dead as a doornail, I don't think that's it. So what is it? What is this about? Are we just passing the time? She has developed the belly for a lot of things since. You must have noticed. That must make you happy. To know that she's finally going to go through with it, and the two of you will be together. Finally go through with huh obviously she's going to kill herself so you can be together i mean otherwise oh wait uh, then she wouldn't be on the run so hard if she planned to join you there wouldn't be any need she would have done it already gosh i'm confused we are going to be together with you as a ghost? And Elena not? Do you honestly think that's going to work? She'll come to me when she's ready. It must have been eye-opening for you to watch her interacting with all these other men, saying the exact same things that she says to you. She tells them they're special, doesn't she? That they have... A special bond that transcends time and space. Did she work in talk of past lives, too? That's a favorite. And all those other guys don't mean anything, right? They all mean nothing except for you. Except for me. That's right. 
And, except for whatever other man she's conning at any given time. Oh, Bruce, you gave up your entire life and future for this? Wake up! Wake up! I don't want to hurt you, miss. But I'm starting to feel angry about these things you're saying about my lady. You're feeling angry because what I'm saying makes sense. Maybe this is something you should think through, Bruce. Talk through it. See if you can talk it away. I would Stop like it. to hear it. Stop it. I don't want to hear any more of this. It's really a shame. There's a lot of good women out there who dream about that kind of devotion and loyalty. It's hard to find. I can tell you from first-hand experience, it's a unicorn. You can kill me now. I don't think it will make you feel better, to be perfectly honest. You died because... you believed in something. I can't respect the awful things that you did. But I can respect that. You see, I believe in something too. Enough to die for it. The truth. You're trying to turn me against her. Divide us. You believed in her. Enough to die in every way a person can die. You believed in her. But she wouldn't die for you. She told those men all the same things, didn't she? Did she or didn't she? Elena isn't on that ship. The quad see no sound. Container ship. The THS November. Time, 2.07 a.m. You think that she's still on the island? Wherever she is. Craig Satchler is with her. One of the few suspects willing to talk about anything said that Craig quit. He left the group. He left? Yes. Wow. And at great risk to himself, depending on how much he knows about their operations. It's not that easy to walk away from these people. What kind of voodoo magic does that woman have? None. It's his weakness, not her strength. Hang on. What's the word? All known members of this group have been taken into custody. And everyone else has been detained for questioning. Any sign of Elena Hobbs or Satchler? None. Hobbs have been through the ship from top to bottom, every nook and cranny, many times over. They're not here. Did you hear that, Jules? Yes, we did. Rex Satchler isn't going to be as much help to her now without his conspiracy's connection. She still has her psycho ghost. She will not for long. I have received word from FOC Warren that Edict Zero has located the arrows with the ghosts and will correct them within 24 hours. The affected ghosts must have been in disguise during the global event. Did we locate what they were trying to smuggle out? We'll know shortly. They located the containers, which were supposed to be filled with agricultural product. It wasn't drugs or anything we thought. <sighs> we have weapons. That's what we have. A lot of them. They were getting involved in the arms trade? They're military-grade weapons across the board. Assault rifles, rocket launchers, grenades, mortars, the full gamut. Enough to bring in a lot of money. Enough to start a war. And they were manufactured by Edict II contractors. If conspiracists intercepted or stole them from armories, there should be a record of when and where. 
These weapons were purchased and received by Edict II, meant for the Bureau of Emergency Oversight under advisement by the Intelligence Department. That's who should have them. Instead, the conspiracists do. What's going on with this? Nothing good. These weapons were bound for London. Are there any leads on Alana Hawks? She slipped away with Satchler while everybody's attention was on the November. Whichever way they went, they have a big head start. Winchester, North Island, Western Outskirts, Barleyport Railway Station. Thursday, March 12, 2415. Time, 1145 p.m. Are you sure we're going to be able to get on the train? What if the check CIDs? Then you'll have one. Look, my contact did me a big favor. I'll owe him. Veronica? Really? I hate that name. Oh, it's to get on the train. It'll be here in a few minutes. It'll take us up the coast. Just keep your sunglasses on and your hair down in your face. The cameras. I know, genius. I thought you said you'd be blackballed after you deserted your group. Off word gets out, I could be. It may not. Something happened back in Crescent City. Something went wrong. It might be the only reason that we sailed across the Sound unnoticed. You're my lucky charm. <laughs> Don't you forget it, baby. I know of a place that we can lay low for a while in Harborough. Just the two of us. Mm. It'll, uh... Give us time to make up for lost time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do some serious, <laughs> serious catching up. <laughs> oh God, it's been so long since <laughs> we. <laughs> uh, no. Uh, no. No to uh, Harborough. I know someone we can go to in Crown Shore. He owns a lot of land on the northern coast. He can get us there. Even after what you've done? Don't worry, Craigie. He'll do anything for me. I'm special. How do you know him? What will he expect from you? Oh, whoa! Whoa! What is up with that? Don't worry about that either. It's my guardian angel. That's some guardian angel. Bruce? <laughs> Brucey? <laughs> Brucey, what's wrong? Who's Bruce? <laughs> Everyone out. Out. Out now! Get out, Craig. Get out if you want to live. What is I'll going on? This. I'll handle this. Wait for me outside. I can't leave you. I can't leave you. I can save your fool life or I can take your fool life. This is your last warning. Go. Stop. Go. Stop being ridiculous. Tell me what's wrong. Oh Tell me. Go. All right, all right, I'm out of here. Why are you doing this? Stop it. What is your problem? Talk to me. Why won't you just talk to me? Just talk. Talk, damn it. Don't you love me anymore? I love you, Brucey. No. No. You know that. No. You know that. I love you. I love you. I love you and only you forever. I love you. I love you. Love is just a word. Forever!
is just a word! To you, a word! is just a word to you! Railway station platform. Lucy, please. Please stop. I love you. I've always loved you. I've loved you in my lives. All my lives, Brucey. Please. You never had others. You have only this one. We will be together forever. Go ahead. Take me. Take me and we'll be together forever. Take me. I'll see you after. I'll see you after. You do not have a silver cord like the others in the after. <laughs> you, you love me. You have no after. <laughs> you love me! You know you love me! You know you do! I feel your passion! I feel it, Brucie! Here is my passion. Vancouver, FIS Field Office, Friday, March 13, 2415, time, 9.30 a.m. Scribe left me from the glass wall onto the platform. She engaged in a conversation with him while he spoke through the PA systems. Then she was lifted into the air, and they all expected her to be thrown in front of the train, which was ordered not to stop and continue on to the next station due to the situation there. Instead, she was thrown away from the train at the last possible moment. In short, he could not do it. He could not kill her. Elena Hobbs was just transferred from the custody of North Island E4 to E1CLS, where they are conducting tests for corruptions. I know nothing else beyond that. I want to congratulate you all on a successful first assignment in this operation. I am late for a meeting, so I must go. I will see you soon. For now, that will be all. Satchler? He crossed a sound in his own boat? How did we not know about that? It wasn't in his name. Hmm. We are here until tomorrow. Our flight leaves first thing in the morning. The Ambassador wants us back in London. Why? We do not know. He did not say. If it's all right, while we're here, there's some people I would like to see. Going to Nary? Yes. You want me to come with? Yes. Okay. What about Bruce Stiegel? He's still out there. There's nothing he can do now. The Master Program corrected all the ghost corruptions. 
Unfortunately, Edict Zero gets it right sometimes. Can the ghosts see each other? Affect each other? No. Now he's stuck as an observer again. Alone. He's not the only one. No one will be able to hear him. Melissa Parker could hear them. We may all have loved ones there. Trap. Living on without really living. It's an awful thing to think about. There's nothing we can do for any of them. Some who have died are there. I'll never be. You're a native. Yes. If those that we have lost aren't out there, they're still ghosts. Our ghosts. They're never gone. We keep them inside us. Vancouver, West Island, The Empire Horizon Hotel, Room 340, Time, 8.45 p.m. Isabel, I heard you. I heard you. I'm sorry that I, I, I'm sorry. I... I don't know how to deal with this. I hope you're still with me. I hope... Yeah, hang on. I've never let go. Don't let go. I... I wish I could hear you now. Maybe some part of me always hurt you. I miss you. I miss you. East Vancouver. FIS Field Office. You see Resnick? Yes. I'm going to the hotel. Will you be staying? Yes, I don't know how long. If you're searching the client registry logs for Elana, you mm. won't find her. I'm not looking for her. Tactical Unit 7. Ah. Of course. Is there anything I can assist you with? No, I'm fine. Thank you. Nair E. West Island. Guyantone Road. Your dad looked thrilled to see you. <laughs> he looked more thrilled to see you. I keep hoping he'll dot me. You hit gold in the father department. I did. And he probably would adopt you. Thank you for coming out here with me, Marcus. Anyway, Jules. This the place? It is. The house isn't there anymore. It's just an overgrown driveway and a foundation. But I still see it. Do you want me to come with you? Could you stay? Please, I won't be long. Take all the time you need. Hello, Sandra. It's me, Jules. 
I haven't forgotten you. I still care. I still remember. I remember everything. I remember you. listening to this episode of D-Date Zero FIS. Music and ambience heard on the show come from The Secret Post, Nine Inch Nails, How to Destroy Angels, Kevin McLeod, Machinimasound.com, ERH, 50 Foot Wave, Rebel 9, Without Warning, Hungry Lucy, and Salatus. Other music and sound effects come from public domain show producer and Slipgate 9 studio resources, as well as material released freely on the internet through such venues as the Internet Archive. Look to the show credits on the website for more information. This episode is licensed under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial No Derivative Works 3.0 Unported License. For more information on Edict Zero FIS, visit its home at edictzero.wordpress.com. Thank you for listening. not adjust your sets. You're tuned to Wednesday Wonders on the Mutual Audio Network. Tomorrow on Mutual is Thursday Thrillers, our roundup of action, adventure, mystery, crime drama, and thrillers, of course. Subscribe to the full Mutual Audio Network feed for every day of diverse audio tales. Or find the Thursday Thrillers feed in your favorite podcast players. This is the Mutual Audio Network. Listening and imagining together.